Welcome to CoreKind Today for May 30th, 2019. This is the show where I give you a quick look at some of the biggest stories happening in the world of cord cutting from the past 24 hours. And if you want to learn more about these stories, I'll put a link to them in the show notes down below so you can read the stories for yourself, come up with your own opinions. I'll really love to hear from you and find out what you think about these stories. If you're new here, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing here. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV, but still enjoy the shows you watch. So let's dive into it. But first, real quick, a great reminder, these are only some of the stories we post over at CoreCarsNews.com. There's so many, I could never keep on top of all of them. So make sure to visit CoreCarsNews.com, put a link to it in the show notes, to keep up to date on all the biggest stories happening. And if you find any core cutting news or tips or even core cutting deals you want to share, click on the Contact Us button, send us an email right through the website so we can find out and share the great news you found or maybe help other people save money with a great core cutting deal. Well, first deal of the day, Toast.net is um, offering free installation, but it ends tomorrow. So if you want to get free installation on fiber or DSL from Toast.net, you need to act very quickly. This is a uh, reseller of AT&T. The great thing about them is they don't have a data cap, which means you're not paying any overage fees if you go over. Plus, they also um, don't have a bunch of hidden fees like a lot of internet services do. So if you've been thinking about um, getting AT&T, check out toast.net, see if they're available in your area, and see if they offer this option. Because it is a great way to get AT&T's fiber and AT&T's DSL without a data cap like most of their plans have. Pull a link to that in the show notes. Special thank you to toast.net for sponsoring us and being a huge supporter. All right, next, uh, first news story I should say of the day is YouTube TV subscribers who pay through iTunes now pay $5 more a month paying through, versus paying through uh, YouTube TV directly. Uh, earlier this month, uh, iTunes started contacting uh, YouTube TV subscribers to let them know that their next bill will be going up to basically 50, or to $54.99 a month versus the $49.99 a month if you pay directly. Now, I know this isn't new. I know a lot of people have been doing this. The reason I write this story and bring it up now is to remind people that, hey, the price hike has gone up. A iTunes charges a percentage of whatever service that you pay for through um, iTunes. So Google and others have been passing on that fee by charging more through iTunes. So if you are a core cutter, you may seriously want to consider canceling that um, iTunes membership there and paying directly through Google, saving five bucks a month. It may not seem like much, but that's most of a Hulu subscription right now. So I'll pull a link down there in the show notes. I have not found a way to transfer a subscription from iTunes to um, Google without having to cancel and then resubscribe over here. If you know of a way, let us know. We did reach out to Google for um, uh, to ask them if there's a way to do that. They have not said so far. But I'll put a link to that story in the show notes. And again, it's one more way. Five bucks doesn't seem like much, but it's half of, a little under half of a uh, Netflix subscription and it's most of a Hulu subscription. So check that out. All right, um, next story. High-speed 5G internet from the internet service GoGo is coming to carriers like Delta and American. Yesterday, GoGo announced that they are upgrading their current towers to use 5G. Right now they use a combination of 4G and 3G in most of their towers to offer domestic internet in the United States and Canada. They say between now and 2021, if I remember correctly, they'll be upgrading all their towers. Now, 4G and um, 3G will still be there as rollbacks if there's a problem with 5G, but they promise that this will offer far better streaming support there. So check it out. If you um, ever wanted to watch Netflix or Hulu, the great thing about this is it will make it a lot easier. I know in the last year or so, many of these carriers on American Delta and more through the GoGo -Go have been upgrading their networks to make streaming a possibility. Tested out recently, had mixed results. It was, it was good, but not great um, streaming experience in Delta. American did pretty well with our Netflix streaming, so I was very happy with that. Hopefully this upgrade to 5G continues that, so that the idea of being on an airplane for a long cross country flight will soon um, not be as bad because you could easily watch whatever streaming services you subscribe to. Have you ever used a one of the newer upgraded Wi-Fi networks that kind of uh, really become popular in the last year or so on many airlines? Have you successfully streamed Netflix, Hulu, Sling, PlayStation View, etc.? Leave us a comment, I'd love to hear from you. Next story of the day, Omniverse is reportedly shutting down its TV service tomorrow. This comes from a press release from Skystream, which is one of the 
um, more well-known resellers of Omniverse, one of the ones you've probably seen us cover in the past. They have um, emailed us a press release that says, effective May 31st, from when, I, when I'm recording this, that's tomorrow, that uh, Omniverse will be ceasing residential TV service. We um, Now, it doesn't mean they're necessarily ending all TV service, but residential, their TV service that's targeting core cards from our understanding will be shut down according to Skystream. They say that they have no control over this, Omniverse has full control and they're shutting it off, and that there um, has been rumors that they may continue it in some other form, but we haven't heard of anything like that at this time. So I would assume any of those um, comments or rumors you're hearing at this time have to be treated as rumors. Now, Omniverse was sued a while back by Ace, which is a conglomerate of uh, TV industry people and more. Uh, basically saying they didn't have the right. Omniverse says, we do have this contract that gives us the right to do this. It's been going back and forth. There was a court case last Friday, um, and it was a closed court case. We haven't been able to find out exactly what happened to it. Now this happens. Now it could have nothing to do with that court case. A lot of Omniverse's resellers have been shutting down recently. HG Home Run shut down. Tiki um, Live, I believe it's what's called, shut down. Um, the Flixon or whatever it was called. They transferred all their TV customers over directly to Omniverse and they ended their TV service with Omniverse. So this could have um, nothing to do with the court case and this could have everything to do with the fact that the number of resellers they're having has um, dramatically dropped recently uh, and that that could be affecting here. My question to you is, do you use one of the Omniverse services like Skystream TV? Is this affecting you? Did you like the service? Were you happy? Leave us a comment down below. I really want to hear from you. Uh, you know, now that uh, HD Home Run, that seemed to be one of the largest with our readers who use the HD Home Run premium TV service. Well, with this, unfortunately, it makes it less likely that that would be coming back. But I'd love to hear from you. If you do use Omniverse, what did you think of it? Or were you happy with it? Were you not? Why? I'd love to hear from you. We will be continuing to follow this very closely um, to figure out what happens with this um, case. And, well... Uh, be posting updates over at corecarsnews.com. Next story up, SpaceX's new low, new low Earth orbit internet service will reportedly be called will be a low cost, according to the founder of SpaceX, and will launch first in North America, hopefully by the end of the year or early next year. So SpaceX has, if you've been following it, you know that it's a very low Earth orbit, much lower than traditional internet satellites, which will reportedly offer far better speed lower latency, and I'll be a great option for core cutters to access internet completely free from their cable providers. Of course, this joins in fixed wireless and 5G and other internet providers out there challenging the traditional DSL and cable market. So it's great to see them um, set a, you know, a goal of launching in the North America by the end of this year or very early next year. What low cost means, we don't know, but I would assume maybe that's a competitive price point to 5G, which has been in the $50 to $70 range. And um, with most of them, we're at about $50 with no data cap. Hopefully, SpaceX can meet that or beat that and give us another real option for internet going forward. Now, to cover their goal is to cover the entire planet with internet. That will take several years of satellite launches. But they have announced that North America, so Canada, United States, and Mexico, seems to be their main target to get that up first and then build out from there. So we'll keep a close eye on this and we'll be posting updates as we uh, learn more. Our question to you is, would you um, buy internet from SpaceX? Amazon's also launching an internet service like this. Would really love to know what you think of this project and what your thoughts are about um, SpaceX's internet service. Next up, uh, PlayStation View and Hulu will add the ACC network. So we've known that for a little while, that, but there's a new detail. We've learned that the network will now launch on August 22nd. So uh, PlayStation View and Hulu will, on August 22nd, now be carrying the um, ACC network to give you access to all kinds of great college sports just in time for the college football season. Now, this does not mean other networks won't carry it. I know a lot of people have talked like, hey, well, YouTube, well, Sling, they offer ESPN. This network's being built by ESPN. It's been in the ESPN3 last year as they aired some games under the ACC network um, logo and like. We don't know. There's still months out. It's very possible that we will hear additional details about what um, streaming services will carry the ACC network as we get closer to August, as we're in August, getting ready to launch. 
It's not unusual at all for companies not to make a big press release, even though the ACC website list, um, some air or TV providers now, um, which includes Hulu and PlayStation View. It's not unusual for a YouTube TV, for example, not to announce anything until the channel is actually live. So for now, I wouldn't be jumping ship, but you do now know, you know, a great thing about cord cutting is you don't have to stick with your service. If you really want the ACC network, you could always switch to Hulu or PlayStation View. When football season is done, switch back. So keep that in mind. And our last story of the day in this busy, busy news day, CBS and Viacom will reportedly hold merger talks in June. This comes from uh, reports over at CNBC who has talked to people familiar with the situation. Um, that says that CBS's board is prepared to engage in talks with Viacom uh, about re-merging the companies back together. Now, they used to be one company. In 2006, they split. They do share the majority um, owner. The same family owns the majority of CBS and the majority of Viacom. But, and there's been, there was pushback originally to block this merger on CBS's part. Since that happened, the CEO has been replaced at CBS. Um, several board members have been replaced and reportedly more friendly board members added to a possible merger, which has made this much more likely. Uh, with the C departure of CBS's um, previous um, CEO, president, we'll call him, um, that clears one of the hurdles that CBS wanted to have a lot of control over who would run this new company. Maybe they're not quite as concerned about that now. My question to you is, would you be upset if CBS and Icon merged? Would you be concerned? Would you not? It seems like they are looking for ways to fight back against a growing number of competitors, especially with like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon, really taking bites into a space that traditionally was dominated by CBS and Viacom, merge them together may help them better fight off that competition. So I'd love to know what you think of this story. If you um, have any comments on these stories, leave us a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll try to answer a couple every um, video so I can you know, respond to as many as possible throughout the week. Uh, but leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're new here again, hey, hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up, it really does help us, and we appreciate your support, and hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV. Well, I will see you back here tomorrow for our normal Friday show, and don't forget, later today, the podcast will be going live here on YouTube and over at podcast apps like the Apple Podcast Player on your iOS device. So check out for this week's deep review with Jess and myself about all the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now. Hope everybody has a fantastic day. Take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.